There we go. Hello and welcome again to the Purdue Basketball Beats. I'm Michael with Anish, and Andy is back from the dead. So, um, welcome back, Andy. I'm you're looking great for I'm me. I hope you guys there. killed a fatty cat for me. Uh, we did. We did. You chanted some incantations, and you're good. <laughs> I resent uh, that. I resent that. You resent that. Yeah, I feel like that. Was, I feel like that was say, oh, the Indian guy just kind of said some stuff. And ju- and I said ju- that and I chanted some incantations. Oh, that's true. Let's not turn this. That's Let's true. not turn this. That's true. Need, they, it is your Seattle magic. magic. We Are we going to do the cultural yeah. discussion now? Let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> After we're done about this, hold on tight because we're going to have an abortion debate. Uh, <laughs> That's right. First. That's right. But first, Purdue basketball. Yay! Let's Happy things. Easy. We really don't have to even worry about Purdue football anymore. Can we just like take a moment to be happy that we're feeling good about something? Oh, it's awesome. It's so good. It's so and good. There, there's that little number right next to our name, that little 21, like right next to our name. Oh, that's beautiful. I'm gonna spoil. I'm gonna. This is a spoiler alert for anyone who masochistically reads the Boyle's Sports Football Predicto on Fridays. But the guy who just got done bashing Purdue football predicted a. What did you predict this weekend? In the oh issue? no no no! So. For the last three weeks of the, or four weeks of the season, my strategy is to go in and look my like get transcripts of my favorite movie monologues and then predict the win, like hopeful Shawshank. movie monologues. Yeah. yeah so um, next week, Shawshank is up there. Shawshank's good. Or no, this week Shawshank. This week is Shawshank. Yeah. This week was my Shawshank one. Uh, oh, next week is uh, is going to be one for my favorite movie of all time, so you can Requiem watch for that. a Dream? Is it yes, be because that's a... very appropriate. But I figured m- might as well just get a monologue in there and predict a win because none of this matters anyway. We're going <laughs> to lose. Who cares? <laughs> so, yeah. And, it's... and my last one was um, the uh, Charlie Chaplin. The, the I love that movie. Um, uh, oh, my God. The Tramp? Oh... No, the movie about Charlie Chaplin, or the Charlie no, the Chaplin Hitler movie, movie. Um, the Great Dictator. I don't oh know, yeah, the yeah. Great Debater. And I was like, yeah, that's not right. Uh, the Great Dictator, the last like the last speech in the Great Dictator is like the greatest monologue of all time. That that was my like that was my predicto last week. I'm glad you're explaining that because I'm pretty sure most of our readers just skip over <laughs> yeah, your over. section anyway. <laughs> Oh no, that's fine. First of all, you should see. Wait, you should see the the uh, the dictator, like the great dictator. It's a great movie. It's a fantastic movie. Everybody needs to see that. Just watch that instead of Purdue football this oh, week. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just go. Actually, no, watch Purdue basketball instead of Purdue football this week because they're well, at yeah, the exact yeah. same time. Thank goodness, too, because yeah. that's yeah. made that decision a lot easier. <laughs> I sit there. I watch the whole football game every week. I just sit there with a blank look on my face. I hate myself so much. Something that I love be trampled on. It's like <laughs> watching a flower being fed through a wood chipper. <laughs> it's the worst three hours of my weekend, every weekend. And yet I sit there. Actually, like, the next the next hour is always my worst hour of the weekend because I know that I just wasted the last three hours. Oh, that's and true. I just, that's and I just sit there and I'm yeah. like, I could have been doing things. I my, my, my wife is mad at me for not paying attention to kids, and <laughs> uh, it's terrible. Maybe you know what though? I we're close. We're headed in the right direction, and we're close. <laughs> well, so, we gotta look at the film. We gotta look, we gotta at, the look at the film. film. And we'll be we'll be there. We'll be close. We're close. You know, I think we've exhausted almost all of our um, options on offense. Maybe next time, all we'll do is throw halfback passes. Why not? Why not? <laughs> as consistent as the game plans have been the last couple of weeks. I swear to God, John Shoup treats our offense like a drinking game. <laughs> <laughs> so Purdue basketball, three and zero, and ranked twenty first. Ah, the best. It's good. So fun. When was the last time Purdue was ranked? Last time Purdue was ranked was uh, Jawan Johnson and Etwan Moore. Uh, the humble Throne Johnson never never they, broke. In they didn't down. because they had a uh, that I believe they had kind of a struggle. Um, they had a struggle to like Score. in the middle of that year. So yeah, I mean like you know go to offensive weapon wasn't there. So true. 
through. So it feels great to have a team successful, to have expectations that seem reasonable. And so far, against you know the local YMCA teams that they've played, things are looking pretty good. And Hammonds is back. For the that, first time I'm celebrating for that, man. I've, I've missed AJ. 15 minutes, 3 of 5 from the field, 8 points, 6 rebounds, 3 blocks. That's the biggest part for me, 3 blocks. Three blocks in fifteen minutes. That seems like a pretty decent rate. I don't. I'm not a math guy, but yeah, that was pretty good. Isaac Haas, though, I think definitely had the game. In only nineteen minutes, he had seventeen points, four blocks, and twelve rebounds. So yeah, we are recording this like immediately after. Like it it is like ten fifty six Eastern time after the Incarnate Word game. Uh, so yeah, I mean, like that's the one that kind of sticks the most. Um, in my mind, um, Haas was insane. Like nineteen minutes. I can't believe he only played nineteen minutes. Hey, let me let me pose this question: How, What teams in Division One do you think he would not start for? Do you think there's more than five teams? I th- uh, Gonzaga. So Purdue, oh, Gonzaga, are the Kentucky. two best. Like, from, um, yeah, probably Kentucky. Yeah, they got they got a couple really good freshmen. Um, Still, I mean, it's uh, it, it, we have to really marvel in the fact that we have two elite centers right now that I mean are pretty interchangeable. Oh, it's insane. Um, oh yeah, Baylor is another one. So Sam Vecini at, at CBS Sports did one, uh, ranked Purdue fifth um, behind UNC, which I don't agree with. Uh, Baylor, which is understandable between Torian Prince and uh, Rico Gathers, um, yeah. and then Kentucky and Gonzaga. Um, and I think Haas would start on Baylor. Like I, I think Haas would. I think Haas would start on Baylor. I think Haas would probably uh, at least fight for starters minutes at North Carolina, even though they're number one. Um, I don't know. I, I, there, there are very few. He's looked a lot better this year than I thought, and he's keeping his turnovers low. He's got decisive. He's got. Just over one per game. It's not bad. I mean, last year, yeah, like Andy mentioned, not very decisive, would bring the ball down, get stripped. He's looking a lot better. Now, it's easier when he's going up against, you know, six-foot, seven-inch centers, but still. Well, so even last year, I actually thought he did a really good job going straight into his moves. Like, that was something that... Um, really contrasted with Hammonds. Hammonds would would bring the ball down a lot. But I thought his consistency wasn't there. Yeah. This year it seems like he knows nobody can stop him if he just goes straight up and like makes a quick move. Um, and nobody can stop him. I mean, like it, that's that's pretty much it. Um, he is the best. It's the biggest luxury that any team could have as a starting center coming off the bench to relieve your seven foot. You know. All American watch list player, and and the uh, sample size is small, but it's it, to me it seems like the refs are um, a little more empathetic to his cause, and they're definitely blowing the whistle a lot more than they did last season. Last year they were just hanging all over him, and uh, I can tell, especially early in the games, they're kind of setting the setting the um, the temp, or I guess kind of sh- they're not they're not allowing a lot of contact like they were last season. And he's, and he's he. I think he's learning how to play defense without fouling as well. His timing, so, his timing's a lot better. I mean, so that was one of the things I was talking about in that in the um, the Golden Black post of the post game like video of their uh, of their press conference. And one of the questions was because earlier this week, I think Coach Painter said that Isaac will never be, you know, a really great perimeter defender. Um, but then he comes out with like averaging three blocks a game, and AJ laughed, or I mean uh, Isaac laughed and just pointed to AJ who was sitting right next to him. And he was like, "I learned it from that guy. Like he's the reason why um, my my you know my defense has improved." I think AJ's the reason AJ's offense has improved is because of Isaac Haas. They seem to be the best friends in the entire world. It's it's amazing. Like we we really have. I think we had the what best one to like, center combination. I mean, so other people have, like, Gonzaga has a better, um, like, power forward uh, rotation, but I don't think anybody has a better center rotation than, than Purdue. 
I think Purdue uses their front court in a much different way than those other four teams that you listed above. I mean, a lot like Gonzaga is good because they've got five guys who can shoot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, you're never going to see Haas shoot a three pointer. I mean, God, I hope not. Right? Like that would just be terrible. <laughs> I mean, but Biggie's shooting, right? Biggie and Vince are shooting. AJ can can occasionally stretch the floor. Um, I mean, Haas. Yeah, but that's I, don't, his game, right? I don't. I don't want Haas anywhere like beyond five feet from the basket. But no. um, yeah, for for Gonzaga, like Karnowski, Wilcher um, can both kind of stretch the floor. So bonus is is good. Um, they better. Yeah, they've got uh, they've got some size, and I think they're the only people that can. That can kind of compare um, to to what Purdue have. I think Maryland uh, is another one. Like you can, if they kind of grow um, together, like during the year, Diamond Stone, uh, Jake Lehman, like they can they can be pretty good too. Well, yeah, and um, they're going to be tough, um, especially with Suleiman and uh, all the guys that they have returning. That's right. But. Yeah. Um, with the Incarnate Word game, that was the first game that Swanigan looked a little bit like a freshman, and I say that, and he still had ten and six. Yeah, I mean, like that's what I wrote in the post game, which is, um, so there are only three freshmen in the last whatever five years who um, started off their their college careers with back to back double doubles with two or more assists, um, and that and two of the people are Jared Sullinger and and uh, Caleb Swanigan. Um, and so I said this today. He had a bad game. He had six turnovers. It was really bad. We had to settle for ten and six on four of eight shooting. Um, I think we'll take that. I think we'll be okay. You know, I he's um, today. Today he was. He made decisions quickly, but he made poor decisions. Um, he wasn't on the same page as Vince and Ray Davis often. Um, he still made some really good entry passes to both Haas and uh, Hammonds, but I think his chemistry right now is better with AJ or with with Isaac than it is with AJ. Um, and yeah, I yeah today he looked a little slower, but still he's he's really good at his job. He's really good at what he does. Well, and especially considering the fact that he's taken the most shots in, in both the last two games, he's. Uh... He's attempt. He's had the most attempts, so he's really. At, they're asking him to do a lot for a freshman in, in a new, unfamiliar position. So, kind of considering that, in I think he's. Uh, I mean, it's pretty uh, kind of amazing what he's doing and how he's able to produce. He also tied for the most minutes uh, in tonight's game with 25, which is also interesting. No Purdue player played l- more than 25 minutes. Uh, it's, it, that's because of the giant lead, right? I mean, um, in all of these games, I think the most minutes anybody's played was Swanigan in the first game at 27, um, which is where I think once we get into Big Ten season, I think he'll float around 25, 27. Um, Edwards, Davis, and and um, and Hammonds, I think, will get like closer to 30, and everybody else will kind of float in and out based on who's based on who's getting minutes, but. Um, you think anybody gets pinched? Sorry, say that again. You think anybody gets pinched off the, out of the rotation? Um, I mean, Why I don't. Think? I don't see any any of the point guards doing much for us. Like I don't see. Um, you know, today I I wrote that too. Today, PJ Thompson had a good game or had good spurts, but they're both defensive liabilities. They're both massive defensive liabilities, and um, that's an issue. And the problem with that is that neither of them are better than, let's say, some of the shooters, like let's say Matthias and Stevens on the floor, um, or Stevens on the floor instead of one of the one of the uh, traditional point guards. So honestly, I think I see one of the point guards getting um, squeezed out. Klein looks really. I mean, like all of the shooting guards have actually looked really good. Um, I do not see how Kendall Stevens can play less than 20 minutes. I mean, that kid is breaking out this year. He's he looks so confident. His shot looks smooth. He's making better decisions. Um, he's healthy. Yeah, he, I mean, like no lingering looks, injuries or anything along that along that line. So. You know what's kind of amazing to me at that position is that, you know, I think a lot of people were kind of ready to jump on Kendall and basically say, 
you know, let you know, let Matthias step up because he can do more. But it's kind of incredible that all three of the shooting guards, Matthias, Klein, and Kendall Stevens, have kind of, I mean, have played exactly how we wanted to play at this point. Because mm-hmm. you think one, you think the, I think the success of one would probably mean somebody else was struggling, or at least from a minutes perspective. But they've all pretty much showcased what they can do. I'm a little hesitant too to draw many conclusions from these three terrible teams that they've played. But as far as a start is concerned, you can't ask for anything better than what's happened so far. Well, Things so, change a little bit on Saturday. So for me, b- before we get to Saturday, the biggest stat that uh, jumps out to me about Kendall Stevens is one turnover in 36 minutes of play mm. um, all season. and that, Or 36, I think that's not even updated. So that's today he was... today. Like he had pretty much a perfect game. He had two turnovers, which was bad. Everybody was kind of sloppy with turnovers today. Um, but he was three for three from the field, four for or three for three from three point line, four for four from the field. Um, he had a, a few really great um, like cuts off the ball. Like I, I don't know. Um, you ask me who gets squeezed out. It's one of the point guards because these shooters are playing so well. And I think that's more vital when we start to play teams like Old Dominion, Florida, those kind of teams like that like we might play this weekend. Do well, you think? Oh, uh, sorry. Go ahead. Do you think Matthias? could at some point take enough point guard minutes that he would even start as a point guard. I don't, he had five assists tonight. I, I, he's again, been playing really well as a distributor. He's my objection. Least, with thoughts. My objection to him at point guard is that it doesn't utilize every one of his skills the best. It's really easy for him to thrive against teams like Vermont and incarnate word. But when there are teams like, you know, like Maryland who's who are going to press him, like Indiana who's going to press him if he's the ball handler, I don't think that that's the best use of his skills. I think the best use of his skills is running off screens, knowing exactly once he runs off those screens, knowing exactly where everybody is, getting the ball and finding either the right passing lane or hoisting up a shot. I really, I think he's a better playmaker off the ball than on the ball, if that makes sense. And that, that's why his assist numbers are so high, and that's why his assist numbers have always been kind of padded, is because he knows how to make that, you know, the the second pass in the hockey assist, right? But once the ball is is in the half court, does it really matter who's the point, who the point guard is? Yes, because it well. Yes, it matters if the point guard is Matthias because the whole point of why Dakota Matthias is such a great playmaker is that he can threaten teams with his shot. If he's the primary ball handler, you're not really threatening threatening anybody with your shot because that's taken away. Yeah, but I mean, I don't know. Purdue's half court offense really doesn't have a primary ball handler. And so again, I I think he can thrive in some minutes there, but I really I man like. That Octavius came a year too early, right? I mean, to have a defensive point guard that could um, that could run the offense, um, I don't think either PJ. Like, I think PJ is a very good offensive player, um, but defensively, he's a he's a real liability. Um, I think Johnny Hill is going to get better as the year goes by. That maybe. Well, and I think with with Hammonds, I think that also will give him a little bit of a slack or a little, I guess, a safety net. So he'll. I mean, I think that she Hammonds will change the entire dynamic too. We haven't really seen that yet. Yeah, that's a good point. So, so moving on to Old Dominion. Wait, can um, I can wait? Make one more point, just so we yes. keep this as long as possible. Sure. Uh, what was he? Oh, well, dude, I thought it was pretty. Interesting. He forgot it. He forgot his point. <laughs> he forgot his point. I'd like to interrupt this. No, no, no. <laughs> the, I thought that there was a new dynamic, uh, you know, seeing Vincent and uh, and Ray D hit the mid-range jumper. Because, um, you know what, we haven't had someone that could create. And, you know, they, they're both looking pretty pretty accurate, and uh, we're kind of seeing shots that they haven't really ever had in their careers they haven't been able to make. So I thought that Vince Edwards, like, so my initial reaction was Vince was the player of the game just because he, what, like, his first ten minutes was just blistering, right? Like, he went 5 for 5 from the mid-range. He had three quick assists. Um, like, I mean, he w- he was just killing him. Like, he's the one that kind of put the game out of reach. And then I looked down on the score sheet at the end of the game, and Ray Davis has 14 points on 6 of 8 shooting. I'm like, where the hell, where did that come from? Um, both of them were so good. 
just facilitating, like take it, facilitating with one step into the uh, three point line. I think it's fantastic. I and we all kind of expected this from Vince, like particularly with some of the um, summer reports. And it's nice. I mean, like he's sh- he's showing, you know, a ridiculous amount of explosiveness that none of us, I think, would have thought were there last year. Um, but Ray Davis. It, like he, I, I didn't think he would improve this much, and maybe he just had a good game, and he'll regress to the mean. But I, I was really impressed with Ray tonight. Is everyone okay with me? Yeah, we can on. move on to the weekend. Old we Dominion, can move on to this weekend. Okay, okay. So, um, Old Dominion is a decent team, but let's not overstate things. They haven't been in the NCAA tournament since 2011. I mean, they played NIT last year, got to the semis. They're returning some players. They've got a guard who's really good, Trey Freeman. He's scoring over 20 a game. Uh, so they're going to be an interesting challenge. And he is – it's really going to be interesting to see how Purdue uh, defends him because perimeter defense has been the one sort of not-so-great thing that, um, that we've seen out of this team so far. Yeah, I, I'm – Kind of concerned, and that was the other thing that the Octius, like that Octius leaving, took away, um, is that we could we could put, I mean, let's say against Indiana, which is probably the most talented backcourt um, Purdue faced last year, uh, with Yogi Ferrell and uh, with with Blackman, um, you could put just one on one, like you could play those two one on one and let AJ handle the rest of the court, right? And you could trust that. Octius would at least slow down Yogi Ferrell, and both times I'm pretty sure um, Ray Davis just absolutely shut down Blackman. Um, this year we don't have that. This year, this year we have Ray still, but that's you know you if you only have one defender and you can't switch, and that's huge because 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 when Purdue is this big and Vince isn't that great of a defender right now. Um, you can't switch anything. So if you only have one defender and you put him on ball, you can free up a lot. You can free up your your main scorer just by running him off a couple screens. And all of a sudden you have an, him in a mismatch. Dakota Mathias is on him or P.J. Thompson is on him, and that's going to be an issue. Um, which is why I would actually say put Ray off ball. Like put Ray off ball and have him be the primary help guy. Um, and like maybe put uh, put Ray Davis on their second leading scorer, who's also another wing. Um, I can't remember his name right now. Aaron Bacot mm-hmm. um, is his name. He's another six four guy. I think he's a he's a combo guard. Um, put put Ray Davis on him uh, and shut down their secondary scorer. Help um, onto uh, Freeman and then and then see see whether that works. But th- it's going to be an issue. It really is. So are we sure that Johnny Hill isn't a good defensive basketball player, and why? I mean, he's averaging two steals a game, which is good enough for fifth in the Big Ten. I think he's learning how to play, and I think that Painter has a lot of expectations and a lot of you know very particular ways he does things. But the good news is that I think with his size, you know, once it clicks, I think he's in a better position than PJ to to really be more effective. And, and Octius, Octius was not that effective at this point in, in the season last year. It took him, understandably, but it took him a while to get acclimated to the team. That's fair. Um, yeah, that's fair. And I, I think, I would hope that Johnny Hill gets gets better. We need another another perimeter defender. I mean, like, that, that was the biggest... Um, ad, so... I say this, that was the biggest reason why Basil's red shirt was kind of an issue. But at the same time, Basil and Davis are very redundant. They're both kind of limited offensively. They both really rely on off-ball cuts, and they need the other four players to space the court out just perfectly for them to work. So to have two of them on the court at the same time wouldn't is, is kind of hard. And um, we need... So if PJ and uh, and and Hill were like fused like Dragon Ball Z into into like one player, then yeah, like you cover the offensive uh, game because I don't think uh, Johnny Hill can shoot, and you cover defensively where just PJ isn't big enough. Like he's just not really that big. He's not as athletic as Lewis Jackson was. 
Um, and that's where some of the issues can can start. And what 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 you'd have to do is just play them aggressively on the perimeter and hope that AJ can um, and Haas. I mean, like let's 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 hope that Haas can uh, can handle any kind of internal um, like you know like in uh, any kind of uh, penetration in the paint, like any anything like. Um, that's why they could play so aggressively last year, right? Was just because AJ was in the paint. So we'll see. They, it'll be a test. It, they're not very good, but it'll be a test. I'm um, I'm not ready to write off Johnny Hill yet. He's he's shooting a higher. Who has has shot a higher percentage in his career from the field than Octavius did. What he can't do is shoot the three. Um, but he's you know uh, an inch shorter, but ten pounds heavier. He's a he's a he's an aggressive guy. I don't know. I think um, it's going to be interesting to see how this team sort of evolves um, on the perimeter from a defensive standpoint. Uh, once we start getting into some of the tougher games, um, but ODO ODU is sort of the first the first sort of test of okay. Now that you're not playing, you know. Now that you're not playing cupcakes, like now, you know, you, you're playing a real team, right? I mean, Old Dominion's undefeated right now, so. Um, um, like, aren't they, aren't they? Yeah, they're 3-0. Um, so, again, they've played cupcakes as well. Um, but still, you know, you 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 play whoever's in front of you, right? And um, I don't know, this, this, this could be an interesting one, but I don't see how they can stop. Purdue inside. I mean, like we're kind of fretting um, because because you know Old Dominion has two guards that can work. Well, most of college basketball has two guards that could actually do something, or two wings that can do something. Um, yeah. Old Dominion has two, you know, a senior seven foot one guy and a sophomore six ten guy. But come on, I, I'm really not concerned at all um, with with the way that any of our bigs could could play. And that's where um, if uh, if Biggie has a good game, like I, I, th- I think uh, Purdue should easily win. And if they don't, then we can learn a few things about the team going forward. Um, so, who who gives Purdue their first loss then? Butler. Butler. That's yeah. my vote. Butler, man, that game is going to be tough. I didn't know um, who we played uh, before. Uh, I I didn't know which came first, Vanderbilt or Butler. Um, they're right. They're back to back, but Butler's first. Vandy's gonna 19. be a tough one. I actually think Purdue matches up with Butler pretty well. I don't think Butler has anybody um, like Weidman can't can't body up with either of the centers, um, and um, and Roosevelt Jones can can handle Vince, but he can't handle uh, Swanigan. Uh, Vandy can match our size and has better shooters. Um, I think Vandy is like a like a March dark horse just because of the amount of shooters that they have and the rim protection they can match it with. Um, I think Vandy might give us our first loss. But then again, you know, if we play, so we beat Old Dominion. If if or if we beat Old Dominion, if Purdue beats Old Dominion, we probably play Fort. And Florida, not terrible. Not very good, you know. They're not the Florida of 2007 or whatever, but um, they're they're a real team, right? Um, right. And so, who uh, Florida plays in Saint. the first round? Oh, St. Joe's. That's right. Uh, St. Joe's is trash, right? Yeah. Um, so, didn't they lose in the preseason? Didn't they lose a preseason game? Like, weren't they one of the few teams that lost a preseason game? Shockingly. You thinking of St. John's? Maybe that's St. John's and that's St. Joe's. You're right. Yeah. Uh, the one that Chris Mullins coaching now. Yeah. You're yeah, right. that's St. John's. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, they're trying. So Florida should be like should be awaiting the winner of Purdue and Old Dominion. So um, it'll be tough. I mean, like that's going to be a tough game. So this weekend, <clears throat> two o'clock. Don't watch. Don't watch the or noon. It's a, it's at noon. So yeah, don't even not even a second of the football game. Just turn on the basketball game. Uh, and and have fun. I think it's on ESPN three. It is uh, because why would the number twenty one team in the country get uh, a cable billing yet? We haven't been on regular TV once. So why why they're only a top twenty five team with 
uh, preseason, you know, All-American watch list and, you know, one of the best front courts in the country. Yeah, no big deal. <laughs> I'm not bitter or anything. No, don't don't take this from At me least be... ESPN3 is a high-quality system. I disagree. I think they're both equally trash. So we are, are we starting to the, the, the sarcastic. The media is against Purdue. Now that we're good again, we can start the um, obsession. No, but it's it's not against. Like I, I really think it's apathetic. The yeah. media doesn't really see much of a storyline um, when it comes to Purdue. Now with the Baby Boilers, there was a storyline. With this team, I can see how you can be kind of resistant. If we, I think no. I think if we get thrust in the spotlight, there's a lot of interesting things about this team. But I think right now, nobody knows about us. And I yeah. Think, and I'd rather I'm I'm good. Like yeah, I'd, I'm uh, I I hope Purdue can win out and still be under the radar. Like I don't want I don't want media exposure for this team. Yeah, no, that that seems like something that would happen. So yeah, <laughs> um, I think at the beginning of the college basketball season, it's always going to be the you know Kansas, Kentucky, Michigan State, Duke, North Carolina. It's Michigan always going to be the big games. Michigan State had an impressive win last night. Did you see that? They played everybody, and they won. They, they, they had some foul trouble. No problem. No problem. 25 fouls called in the first half of that game, by the way. Oh, it was I, awful. It was so terrible. That, that, that's what the new rules are, right? Like That's the new hand check rules. So. Yeah, no, it's that good because like, it makes the like, games more exciting. You can't expect him to, to. I mean, he was shooting lights out. Granted, he's done it against us before, but and he has at least five of those games this season. But uh, you know, you can't expect him to be super. Who's who that? Valentine. Yeah, yeah, Denzel Valentine. Yeah, he's on a lot of preseason All American lists, though. You know, like he's. And um, the he did have the triple double, which was yeah, not common. But. Who's that? Trans Aaron Harris. That's his name. Yeah, uh, that oh, former Lawrence North ball ha- uh, standout. <laughs> West Virginia too, right? Like that's where yeah, he played from. and shot lots. Like basically owned that offense. He can he can play the basketball. He can play the basketball. He can put the ball. The goal of basketball is to put the <laughs> ball through the hoop while preventing the other team from doing the same thing. He is good at the first of those two things. <laughs> I uh, this team's fun. This team's really fun, and it's fun because they're not much like any team like in college basketball right now. Is like that they're, an they're, advantage or disadvantage in March? Round of <laughs> sixteen. Is that an advantage or a disadvantage, or does it all just come down to matchups? In there? So take the cop out answer. It all the, comes down yeah, to exactly. The the old adage, right, is that the game slows down in the playoffs, right? Um, so you would think that a slower pace, more grit, and all of that would play in Purdue's favor. Not a hard, uh, not a hard-working players. Is that what you're saying? Well, yeah. Not a grit. <laughs> but not a, not a high basketball IQ players. Is that what you're telling me? <laughs> you're saying, Anish. <laughs> but I think that has been disproven in the last couple of years in March because shooting wins. Shooting and guard play win in March. Uh, offense, in college basketball. Offense has always won, right? Like, that's why Gene Cady couldn't get past the Elite Eight. I mean, it's the, I, Wisconsin over Kentucky, right? Wisconsin over Kentucky last year. Kentucky was, you know, they were a good offensive team, but they were a defensive juggernaut. They might have been the greatest defensive college team of all time. Um, and they went cold. Like, yep. they, they went cold. And... Hopefully Purdue doesn't run into that, right? I mean, that's the biggest thing is that we didn't redshirt Ryan Klein because if it's possible that, I mean, we had it last year, it's possible that two shooters uh, go cold, and it's less probable that three shooters go cold. But, man, I mean, when... See, that's... And now I, I do actually think Purdue's identity is offense. Um, and Purdue will have a tough time uh, stopping guards, and that's why I think teams like IU... With with some really really good guard play, um, could could hurt us. I think uh, Virginia is another one. Teams with really good guard play or wing play um, could could really hurt. But see, that's that's not such a bad position to be in if you're talking about two top fifteen teams that can hurt you. Oh uh, yeah, I mean, the, I mean the, all 
every team ranked ahead of Purdue can hurt them. I mean, Purdue is not the most talented team in the nation. There's going to be – it's going to come down to – the thing that I like about this Purdue team is that they've got two ways to score, right? You can either yeah. just pound the ball with the big guys or you can shoot with the, the three high-quality shooters that they have. That, I think, is an element of Purdue offense that they have not had ever in – Ever, probably, right? And ever since Glenn Robinson could pretty much do whatever he wanted. But even in the modern era, though, this is the first time that we have, you know, wings, you know, even if, if, ref, if you know, Ray D and Vince Edwards can reliably hit a three, I mean, and P.J. Thompson, that's, we've never had more than two, you know, reliable shooters at once out. And that's, I mean, that's what happened in the VCU game, right? I mean, the VCU game, we just went cold. Um and and forgot how to play defense. Well, like Jawan Johnson forgot how to play defense, but well, it makes so much difference from a spacing perspective when you have to keep it yeah. to be honest. Even if they're not hitting it, it changes the dynamic of of the offense. Yeah. Do you think that Purdue could go cold, um, like completely and drop yeah. one of these games between uh, between now and Butler? So, you know, yes. Old Dominion, Lehigh, Pitt. Um, New Mexico, IUPUI, Howard, Youngstown State, like those kind of teams that are clearly not as good as Purdue. Do you think we can drop one of those? I can't see it happening. I, th- I, th- I think I think it can happen. Do you think we can drop several? No, probably not several. But, it, you know, I don't know. We'll see how the team responds if they drop a I'm, stupid one. I, you know, <coughs> we've seen, we've had a lot of, you know, cupcakes. Every, every year you have a lot of cupcakes. And there's always games where you just you grind it out and it's really boring, or you know you're in bonus with 12 minutes left. But the, the disparage, I feel like this team right now, just with the depth that we have, is such a greater disparage against the, some of these cupcakes than, than usual. Like I'm, I'll give you, a, I'll give you a team to watch out for. Uh, New Mexico. Uh, there's a chance that. Why do you say that? Because they can shoot. They've got really good guard play, and they play halfway decent defense. All you need is a team that can um, shoot the ball really well. They, they can score, and they're scoring like over 80 points a game. Whoa. And uh, Who's, Who um, is Elijah Brown? Elijah Brown, their, their guard who's like all world. Well, he's, he, he's playing like it. Is he, yeah, is he a transfer? I don't know his story. Oh, that's that's why his name sounds familiar. Uh, he transferred out of Butler. Oh, are you right? Yeah, you might be right. Yeah, that's why his name sounds so familiar. Yes. Um, oh, wow. and he is lighting the world on fire right now. Yeah, he's doing right. So, I mean, a, a team like that, I, I think New Mexico is the biggest trap between us and Butler. That'll be a tough one. I, it'll be, I don't know. I mean, like the the Hammonds era has not been defined by mental toughness, right? Um, this t this year could Shots be different. Fired. I mean, I finished last in the Big Ten for the first time in you know 15 years. Um, last in both Purdue, last in both football and basketball. Not, we're not, we're not talking about that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, you know. This team seems to be different. Um, I would like to say that AJ is different. I'd like to say Ray Davis is the best leader that Painter has ever had, but um, I be right. Man. I, yeah, I. Lewis I, Jackson, come on. I would think that this team wouldn't go into a mental funk like we've kind of seen this team do since 2012, uh, and since Rob left, really. Um, but I I don't know. I I'm still I would have to see it, right? I'd have to see Purdue get um you know either rally from behind or give up a lead and still seal the win. Um like any kind of adversity. Like that's I, that Cincinnati still like kind of lingers um in the back of my mouth, right? I mean like that Cincinnati was that's going to be really good this year. That's a that was a loss that was awful and they brought back everyone, right? Except Octavius Ellis. I think he um, I think he graduated, but pretty much everyone else. Did he graduate, um, or was or he? Uh... He left. Um, <laughs> he's not eligible to play basketball anymore. I'm assuming he graduated. Is it because he's in jail, or? 
<laughs> that elbow was pretty fierce. He has but, a history. He's had a. But he, I, or that team, uh, teams like that. Um, I mean, I, I would hope Purdue could play like that sometimes. Like, I, I would hope Purdue could play bully ball um, and just kind of, like, you know, kick teams into submission, kick smaller teams into submission. Um, but we've seen teams like Vermont shoot well, um, and that's that's an issue. Like, uh, you know, perimeter shooting is going to be an issue. And teams just could get hot. Vanderbilt has four shooters surrounding their center. Um, so they could get hot pretty easily. Um, I don't know. We could we, we could see, but this weekend, um, Old Dominion and probably Florida, um, it'll give us kind of our first test of guard play that could the guard play that could really hurt us, and whether um, Haas, Hammond, Swanigan, Vince Edwards could really punish people inside, and Purdue can get just enough stops like on the um, like outside of the arc um, to make it you know. To make it a win. So, what's the biggest improvement for this team since last year? Shooting, Swanigan, Biggie, Biggie. Yeah. Just, just uh, having um, somebody who can facilitate as well as Vince did last year um, in a better, like in a better package, right? I mean, he just eat, he chews up rebounds. Like today, he didn't have a great game, and he was just killing people on rebound, just yeah. blocking. Like I, I don't have the advanced stat. I wish I had the advanced stats on this, but I would bet Purdue's rebounding margin when Biggie was on the floor was astronomical, just because yeah. he would either body somebody up or he would go and get the rebound. He only had six today, but I mean, that that's a skill that you can have when you're not. Uh, producing when you're not scoring the ball, and maybe when when Biggie's getting outworked a little bit on the other end of the court. Um, but Big, the addition of Biggie, um, everything that has been adver- everything that was advertised is what he is. How high? How high does this Purdue team get ranked before the tournament this year? I'm scared. I'm scared. You want to say top ten? You want to say top ten? We're going to be in the, be in the position, I think, to, to be able to prove that. I mean, yeah, big that's 10. right. So, I mean, and it's and not even like, not even. Let's let's look at before the Big Ten. I mean, like we play, we have the option or the opportunity of playing two, um, like two teams that are in the Power Five that aren't doing well in Pitt and um, and Florida. If we play Florida this weekend, and we have two ranked teams, I mean, like we have two ranked teams that are really, really good in uh, Butler and Vanderbilt before Big Ten season even starts. Um, yeah, we'll we'll have the option or the opportunity to get um, pretty high up, particularly when college basketball looks to be down this year, right? Um, and that means that there's an opportunity. Like that means that there's an opportunity for some. Um, unconventional team to kind of leap a little bit and to beat teams that they're not supposed to. So, I I'd say 11. I I don't think that Purdue gets some of the wins that um, I th- I think Purdue doesn't beat both Vandy and Butler. Mm. Um, but you know I what? I, there is that game. Do you know the the red light red button game for East One Moore went off yeah. against Ohio State? I think there's potential to have a, a moment like that where. You know, we might be 10, and we might be playing Maryland or MSU, who might, you know, be a lot higher. One of those kind of program-defining games. Ah, that's making me smile. Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> there's oh. there's that stretch um, late in the season. Yeah, um, like, so consecutive games are at Minnesota, Nebraska at home, at Maryland, Michigan State at home, at um, Michigan. And then we get, you know, Northwestern, which is whatever. Um, and then we finish on India at Indiana, Maryland, and Nebraska at Nebraska. Like that yeah, tail awesome. end of the Big Ten, um, that one, two, three, four, five, six, seven games, uh, that's going to be a doozy. So because it matters so much, Purdue beat North Carolina A&T 81 to 40. Florida beat them 104 to 54. Discuss. So does that mean that Florida's going to be there? Nothing. Oh, oh, no. That means that we're going to lose by, like, 14. <laughs> I, I think so. I think oh, so. no. 
I know. Why would you say this? I know. I that's know. how math works. It's how math. It's there's. It, that's how basketball works. Dang okay? it! You just gotta play enough games where everyone has opponents in common, and then just do the math and uh, uh, points a national champion. Hey, that that's how uh, Purdue won the national championship last year in football, right? Oh, we, beat, yeah. we beat Illinois, but then Illinois beat Ohio State or something like that. There was a nice way, circle. Illinois one and two in basketball. How terrible is that? Lost to North Florida and someone else. How about uh, Wisconsin losing to uh, the worst team in the SWAC? SWAC. I mean, I didn't. I wasn't big on Wisconsin this year. I mean, like you, you lose two lottery picks and the national player of the year. One of them's a national player of the year, and you can only, you know, you can only be so good. Um, I'm not really concerned with Wisconsin, but you know, then again, Bo Ryan. So they're playing uh, Georgetown next, so that that'll tell us a lot. It's tomorrow, I think. Who uh, no, who, won, who won the Georgetown uh, Maryland beat Maryland the, squeaked it out. Yeah. Yeah. Um, those two schools hate each other. By the way, it's really funny. Yeah, that's a good that's a good rivalry. You went to one of those schools. I went to yeah, well, grad school at Georgetown. It's yeah. a little different when you're a grad student. Oh yeah, um, I mean, I mean, I'm at Pitt, and I didn't understand how grad students at Purdue weren't like diehards, and now I, I don't really care about yeah, Pitt. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I went to IU for grad school, so uh, I can. Were you in Bloomington, or were you, you were in Indy, right? I was in Indy, but it was very. It was IU. <laughs> That's a there was a there's a doctor I worked for um, who did his undergrad he did his undergrad in like finance at Purdue like out of Cranert and then decided he wanted to be a doctor and like went to IU but the border like he put his diploma in a Purdue frame and it says like IU Medical School and it's pretty excellent. That's awesome. I uh, I got my brother-in-law is a big IU basketball a huge IU basketball fan. So for I'm his so birthday sorry. last year, I got him a IU basketball T-shirt in Purdue colors. <laughs> <laughs> it's a black T-shirt, and in gold writing, it says Indiana basketball. I had it custom made. <laughs> I have a video of him opening it, and it's the greatest thing ever. I'm Man, very happy with I think I, we got derailed here. I like. I enjoy being happy and talking about Purdue. This is great. This is good. This is good. Yeah. And now we just have to suffer through two more football games, and then we can forget about You that. have to suffer through two more. I'm not doing shit. Well, not, I guess I'm not technically I only have to suffer through one more because I'm sure as hell I'm not watching the game on Saturday. <laughs> yeah, I'll watch the IU game. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I'll be at um, – it's the one pit game that I'm going to this weekend or this year because uh, I haven't been to Heinz Field, which is where Pitt plays. So I'm gonna see. I'm gonna see Louisville. Um, So honestly, that sounds like a terrible football game. Yeah. Oh, totally. Oh, yeah. Uh, (laughs) I mean, like Pitt should win because they're they're not bad, Um, and they had they have Michigan State's defensive coordinator coaching them now. Um, But I'm actually gonna miss the game. I'm actually gonna miss the uh, both both games. Wow. I know some basketball fan. I am. I know some. On on that note. I think we're going to wrap up this week's edition. We have literally <laughs> wasted your time. <laughs> yeah, but that's what we're here for. That's all. The we're Purdue here. basketball beat slash pit football. That's right. Slash. Thanks for making it all the way to the end of the hour. We very much appreciate it. We appreciate it. Subscribe and do all that. And and log on to boiledsports.com every Friday to hear quotes from Anisha's favorite movies. Very true. All right. Bye, guys.